Hey, I'm John DeVage with Our Revolution Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. Uh, with me today is Meg Fossiner, who is going to be the candidate for House District 20 in Colorado, right here in Colorado Springs area. So first off, congratulations on the primary win. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think what I was most impressed about overall actually was just the number of votes um, between both you uh, and, and Suzanne, you guys got, you know, a pretty big increase in the number of votes in, in the House District compared to previous elections. So I, I guess overall, uh, first question is just, um, what were your thoughts on like just the primary process and going through that and what, what are your kind of takeaways from, from the campaign so far? You know, I think it was really great um, to have Susan as a primary opponent. Her and I share very similar values. And we were both really committed to maintaining a positive campaign and staying strength-based. And so I think that both of us learned a lot and it really helped prepare us for the general election. Um, and you're right, we did increase voter turnout significantly and have had really positive feedback on um, the campaigns that we ran and on our values. So, you know, it's an honor to be the candidate that's moving forward and hopefully we can flip this seat in November. It really is gonna take all of us. Um, it's gonna take volunteers, it's gonna take funds, and it's gonna take motivation from people who may be used to this district being Republican um, and kind of giving a little bit of hope and faith that we can flip it and getting involved. Yeah, because I mean, I think the, I don't remember the quite not quite the numbers, but I think like you probably know better than I do. It was like eleven, like was it like eleven thousand total votes um, between uh, for like the, just overall for the Democratic side? I think the like the Republican side was like twelve thousand, so it wasn't like astronomical. And I think like if I again just memory I'm recalling it correctly, it was like eight thousand votes last election. For the democratic ticket it was like a dramatic increase that actually got it you, you know you're not it's not as unhopeful i think as a lot of people always think this area being so conservative so red there's no way democrats can win but it, this primary overall what we saw was a pretty dramatic increase in democratic tone turnout um even that to rival or exceed uh the republican side i mean i know for county commissioner district three there was more democratic votes um and I mean, there's just dramatic increases in basically every other district. So um, yeah, I don't think it's as unhope and un unhopeful. And I agree that it is something that will require everyone to come together and, and work towards, so. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I don't um, know the exact numbers either. I have them all on a spreadsheet, but we there was only about a 2,000 vote difference between the combined Democrats and um, the Republican candidate. And a big part of that is unaffiliated voters. So unaffiliated voters in this district are almost equivalent to Republican voters. And what we're seeing is that the leadership that Republicans are offering right now is not what people want. Um, and I maybe should say the lack of leadership. You know, we have a president who is downplaying COVID and we have um, Republicans in office that are refusing to wear masks and making even simple things about that are about the health of our community, political issues. And so I think that people are really seeing that and are really concerned about it. I know that personally I am. Um, the health and welfare of our communities shouldn't be politicized. Yeah, and I, I feel like, you know, with your experience as a social worker as well, you've kind of seen um, that exemplified, not just even in this pandemic, but just overall like society um often not really casting kind of casting aside uh people who are the most vulnerable uh, and i agree i think it's most uh it's very disturbing and very uh it's very very hard to kind of deal with the fact that there's a party that's just so against uh just the common welfare for yeah. for re literally just political reasons and but the, even that like i don't quite understand because like you know the all this controversy about wearing masks and opening schools like those should not be controversial things like safety of our children and doing the absolute bare minimum of wearing a mask <laughs> uh 
uh, to show such a dramatic, uh, you know, decrease in, in, in spreading the disease just seems like common sense stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess overall, like what, what has been your, your take in the last few weeks? I think there's been a lot of, um, I, I, I'd say even more extremes taken, uh, for, I thought, again, there was going to be the kind of, at least a commonality in like looking out for like the welfare of, of children in schools, but even that's politicized, like, I guess, what are your thoughts on that? You know, I think it's really heartbreaking, um, but we also are very good, unfortunately, in our society at dehumanizing people. And we see that across the board, whether we um, are seeing the dehumanization of people because of their socioeconomic status or because of their race. And you're absolutely right that, you know, there's this othering that's happening. And so for a lot of people, going back to school and attending a public school is really the only option once they open, right? And sending their children into that environment, there, there are no other choices. But when we look at who's making these decisions, we look at Bessie DeVos, who never has attended public school in her life. Um, and we look at some of these other politicians who really have financial investments in charter schools and in programs that offer different alternatives. And so I think that unfortunately there's a financial incentive for some to push people to make that decision of either paying for a private school or sending their kids to a public school and taking the risk. And that's disgusting um, and heartbreaking. You mentioned that I'm a social worker and I do, I work with some of our most vulnerable populations and all too often they're the ones that are hit the most dramatically. And we're seeing that as COVID plays out as well. Um, and that expands not only to the population that I work with, but when we think about people in the Black community and people in the Hispanic community, we're seeing them hit especially hard. And there's quite a few reasons for that, but they are overrepresented in many of our service industries. So they have jobs that are requiring them to publicly interface with people who may or may not be wearing masks, may or may not be staying home when they're not feeling well. They also have less access to healthcare, both health insurance and community programs that are nearby and easily accessible. So there's a lot of reasons that we're seeing this play out, but it really, the consequences are being heavily focused on people who are the most vulnerable. And that's kind of what motivated me to run long before COVID was that these are issues that have been going on. Um, housing is a big issue, and we're about to see an increase in foreclosures and an increase in evictions now that the governor's lifted the orders and the moratorium on that. Um, so we need to address those issues because what COVID is showing us is we all really are connected. Um, if you go to the grocery store and your cashier is sick and can't afford to stay home because they don't have paid medical leave, they can't afford to see a doctor because they don't have quality health insurance. That impacts every single one of us. And so we really need to stop this othering of people and recognize that we are really truly connected and we're all in this together. Yeah, and I feel like that's uh, something that, 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 if anything has been shown that uh, American society is, is lacking, especially compared to like the responses of other countries that you know, there's similarities and obviously differences um, in, in the way different, uh, you know, other countries are run and other countries' cultures are, but ultimately like um, having like a sense of community and togetherness um, and, and, you know, collectivism is something that I think is, this is definitely shown is um, America's kind of lacking. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, independent voters, like unaffiliates. What's your kind of plan like? What have you, um, what are you trying to do to like reach out and bring them uh, onto, you know, the, the Democratic side, voting for the Democratic side? Yeah, so it's all about conversations. Um, it's all about talking about what their priorities are and what their values are. 
And if those are being represented right now, I am finding that many people do not feel like their values are being represented. I generally believe that the majority of Americans and the majority of people are good. They do care about their neighbor. They do want what's best for our country and for our community. And we've become so divided that it's an us versus them. And people are trying to figure out where they fall into. Um, and that's not necessary to me. Um, to me, what's important is saying we together all have to overcome this. We all together working as a community can come up with solutions that keep us safe that promote the general welfare, like you mentioned earlier, and that help us live up to our promise of justice for all, because those are American values. And it doesn't need to be us versus them to get there. It's really all of us together. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think, again, when you look at a lot of uh, commonality proposals and uh, platforms that are very popular amongst you know, both sides, Democrat, Republican, and affiliate, um, they're policies and, and platforms that benefit the working class. I mean, they benefit, you know, the community as a whole, not corporate interests. So I can, I almost, gar you know, almost guarantee anyone out there, you go and you talk to someone, it uh, doesn't matter what their party is, they won't, uh, they won't be against uh, raising taxes or making sure corporations pay their fair share. They, they, they want their families to have access uh, to health care. And not have to go bankrupt for that. That's not, you know, that's not something that I would say is a popular. Uh, right. thing, but unfortunately, that's what we see in America all time and time again. Especially in this, you know, people get laid off, they lose their health, well, health insurance. So, yeah, I I think that's a good strategy. I guess, um, you know, with the COVID situation, I'm, I'm guessing it's having those conversations is harder and harder <laughs> to do. Um, how are you kind of adapting and, and trying to reach out to those people to? Um, you know, get have those conversations and get your name uh, out there. So during the primary, I texted over 6,000 people. And my text was really simple. It was an introduction and it said, I'm running for office. I would love to hear your concerns. What issues would you like me to fight for if I'm elected? And I'm just going to continue to expand on that. Um, my goal is to really touch base with as many voters in this district as I can, because the more that we can talk about that, the better off we are. And of course, there are people who did not share the same values as me, and that's okay. Um, I'm not the only candidate in this race, and I recognize that we do have differences, and that's why it's so important for us to have a strong democracy. That's why protecting our ballots and the way we vote is important. Um, but I think that I share more values with people than um, I disagree with overall. Yeah, I guess um, kind of ending like what, what are you, because um, you're running, are you running against an incumbent, correct? Is, or was it term limited? I apologize, John, um, you cut out there for me. Sorry, yeah, that sounds looks like my connection dropped a little bit. So uh, the person uh, you're running against uh, is are they running? Are they an incumbent or? So I guess that's ultimately the the question that I always think about too is like, what what have they represented in the past and how you know what, how does that differ from you? Yeah, so Representative Carver is interesting. Um, she doesn't sponsor a whole lot of really high profile bills. Um, but her votes are pretty unfortunate as far as I'm concerned. So for example, she tends to vote in, against environmental protections, um, which really impacts my district because we sit right at the base of the mountains um, and even up into the mountains, including Cascade, Green Mountain Falls, Chapita Park, um, and some of Palmer Lake. And so her choices to vote against environmental protections impact our very backyards. Um, and most voters, I think, absolutely want to have clean air and clean water. I don't think that that's highly debatable. Um, and so it's really been a matter of digging into her votes. Um, she has supported legislation that I absolutely disagree with. For example, a few years ago, she was a co-sponsor on a bill that 
and would allow people to conceal carry weapons on school grounds. I don't think that most people want strangers walking around with guns on their kids' campuses. Um, and so some of her legislation that she has been a sponsor of and has been a co-sponsor of, I've disagreed with, but it's really a matter of her votes. Um, another bill that she did not support was the police accountability that passed this year. And so holding police accountable and ensuring that they are following very basic standards does not seem out of line to me. Um, and that bill gained bipartisan support, um, but she chose to vote against it. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. I mean, especially all the, you know, the issues that we've been having as a country, but specifically also in the springs that uh, we've seen with our uh, police en enforcement. Yeah, it, it boggles my mind how they, you know, the sort of immunity that they get um, and how they, they, you have to jump through so many hurdles uh, and fight, you know, a really strong police union to try to implement any sort of change or hold anyone accountable um, is, yeah. And it, yeah, it, it was a bipartisan bill too. I was actually really happy about that. And, and I, I, from what I've seen and gathered and heard, it seems like police accountability isn't an unpopular idea uh, with people. So uh, most people seem to agree with that. So yeah. Well, um, I, again, I think that's basically all the questions that I had. I just want to say before uh, we end this that, you know, I think it, we were all really excited to see progressive, you know, progressive candidates win, uh, progressive candidates um, really touting, I think, the, the right message and representing, you know, the working class. And typically, you know, what we've done when we find a candidate that does represent those sort of interests and sort of those proposals, uh, we give them our endorsement and our backing and we're proud to announce that we're uh, our, our Revolution Colorado Springs is firmly behind you. Um, we're going to be doing everything we can uh, to support you, um, give and provide resources uh, through text bankers and um, basically our platform to do everything we can to support you. So, uh, yeah, our Revolution Colorado Springs formally announce it, uh, announces that we're endorsing uh, Meg Fossiner, House District candidate for uh, District 20. Uh, really, again, we really just appreciate having uh, a good progressive ground here in Colorado Springs and uh, having a, a good candidate and you that's running. So um, thank you for, again, representing the, I think the right ideals and the right sort of message that we need in this country moving forward. Thank you. It's an honor to earn your endorsement and your support. Um, I mean, really, I think that we are all fighting for American values. Um, we're fighting for that chance again to be able to reach the American dream. And as we have seen the wage gap get further and further apart, that gap is making it impossible for many people. And so continuing to fight for justice is what I think we're all focused on. And I appreciate your support in doing so. Yeah, I mean, I think what you said before too about um, the, how everyone's connected. Uh, how, you know, if, if someone's forced to go into to work, uh, even if they're sick, I mean, how that affects community, how that affects just overall, um, you know, everyone's lives is, is, is impacted by that. So, um, and that's what I feel a lot of politicians aren't representing that sort of, again, collectivism and uh, sense of community. It's, it's, if it's a sense of community, they, they, they say that word, but it doesn't mean the same thing. It's not actually trying to, um, you know, support the commonality and what, what the interests of the working class. So uh, it, that's what we, me personally, always think that we need more people who represent um, the common folk, the common person, uh, and not corporate interests. And um, it's, it's, again, it's really refreshing that we're, we're seeing a good batch of candidates come out uh, in, the last, in the last few years inspired by Bernie Sanders and others um, in, the in the progressive movement to really run the, you know, campaign for the people uh, and, you know, not have a message that's about them, but about, you know, us as a community. So um, again, congratulations on your primary win. Uh, it was really exciting to see the results and uh, look forward to, you know, providing support and doing what we can to get you across the line in November. Thank you. I appreciate that. And 
Um, meg4colorado.com is my website, www.megforcolorado.com. Um, and that's where people can sign up to volunteer, help do some literature drops, write postcards, make donations, um, any of the above are greatly appreciated. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much for sitting down talking to us today. Hopefully uh, you have a good rest of your day and uh, look forward to hearing from you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you.